so uh, me and Mike got up uh, early this morning and jumped a plane along with whoever's holding the camera and uh, we're down here in North Carolina going to uh, a town just outside of Raleigh Durham and I was asked to keep that kind of quiet uh, but uh, we've got a set of cars that we're going to try to buy today a lady is a widower her husband passed away uh, last year and uh, she's looking to get rid of like uh, eight to ten cars um, I've seen some pictures. Uh, we're kind of close on the price range. Uh, there's some there's Cuda convertible in there. There's a Challenger convertible in there. There's a, a GTX blower motor car, uh, a Pro Street truck, uh, Corvette like 58 gasser, uh, a 67 Corvette with a 427 uh, 435 horse four speed, uh, another Corvette black. Um, don't remember the year 63 or four. Uh, but I think it's a gasser or a Pro Street setup also. And uh, Pace Car, 69 Camaro. I don't know. There's a few things in there. And uh, she's ready to wrap it up and get the uh, whole garage kind of cleaned out. So we're going to go down here and try to get them bought. Uh, two things that aren't working real well for us. One, this is supposedly off the beaten path and down a dirt road. And it's rainy, which is going to make it hell to get all these cars out of there uh, if we get them bought. So first things first. Go try to make a deal. Michael, I think this is the right place. All right. Uh, Richard. Steven, nice Steven, to meet you. Steven, so you guy I've been talking to. Yes. Wow, Richard, thank you. How Michael. you doing? Michael. Yep. Right on. Well, that's Mike. I'm Mike. Mike. Hi Hi. Nice to meet you. Two Mikes. Uh, Mike, you're, I guess you're uh, the gentleman's son? Yes, sir. All right. So you worked on a lot of these cars, from what I understand. Them. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Steve, you're the you're the man with the plan that called me out of the blue because you thought we were out of business. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't want you to, man. I do now. All right. So we got a lot of cars. Um, let's just go through them one at a time and see what we know. This is a '58. Yeah, '58 Corvette, pretty much drag car. <laughs> did did we run this car? Ever or um, we had a guy run it for us once. Um, he really loved it. He wanted to keep it, and we didn't let him. My father wasn't crazy about drag racing. He just loved burning out and drinking beer and stuff like that. No, I get it. This is my favorite thing to do: burnouts and drinking beer. Yeah, I was gonna say. It sounds like you. Yeah. So just a nice '58. I mean, it'd be hard to put it back uh, stock. It's been tubbed, but you know these cars. This model is, I don't know, there's a certain group of guys that used to see these cars race that are starting to kind of like the pro street vet look, but uh, you'd have to do a lot to get it back to the street part of it. Well, I mean, it would look good towing behind something like this Chevrolet truck going to the drag strip. Okay, tell me about this. What do we got here? Do you know what? Uh, this is a 64 Chevy. Um, this is the last project I uh, worked on with my father. Um, it was a love affair, both from working with my father and the project we were working on. Um, I didn't know a whole lot when I first moved down here. He taught me a lot of things. He originally called it the Diablo. The and Diablo. Uh, well, that's one way to, to tub. Put, yep. the, put the fenders on the inside, that too. That's the only time I've ever bad, seen it. Yeah. I've never seen it Double done like this. Work. I did something similar to this to a trailer that we, we built to tow one of our motorcycles, but I like it. Yeah. Doesn't hurt my feelings. Diablo, with your hat and that jacket, dude, this is all you right this here. This is what I drove in high school. Whoa. This exact truck, but in blue. Really? Yeah, that was my high school truck. Yeah, see, I had a Bandit Trans Am. I was a little cooler. You had a Maverick. Well, that was in that was early in high school. When I graduated high school, I had a Bandit Trans Am. Well, we were talking about graduating. I, I had an LTD. I kind of went downhill. Oh, I was wondering if you even got out of high school. So we got, is this a 71? Yeah, 71 Challenger, started life as a 318 car. You tell the man didn't like low power, so he's a, was a 440, big block in there now. But cool, you know. Um, it's a high option car with AC and everything on it, power brake. Paint's flaking down there, is that just bad prep? Uh, you got a body man to fix that. Where? Just a just a little just a little <laughs> bit of metal work there. He'd get, he'd get that knocked out in the afternoon. I think it's just a little bit of bad prep work. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't feel any rust. It's a cool combo though, blue with white and white. That was his favorite car. That was his, he had a, a, a 370s, a 370 Challengers. Uh, he really loved working on it. He had one with his first wife. He had to get rid of it. Then he rebuilt another one just because he missed it and it was the love affair with the car. 
He got this one um, just because he loves convertibles, although um, he never he never fell out of love with a hard time. Right on. And then we got a 70 Cuda, power brakes and power steering. But this was a small block car too that we put a 440 in, right? Yeah, originally a, a 318. He did the motor, paint, body work, and everything on this, put the spoiler on it. And it's actually a Cuda. Yeah. Do we know if it's a Cuda or a Barracuda? I'm not a Mopar man. <laughs> hey man, come on, it's Mopar or no car? I'm more of a vet man myself. Well, let's move on to the vet. <laughs> so this is uh, 66. Big block four Big speed Big block car. four speed power brakes runs great. But these cars haven't moved really in a couple of years. Yeah. So they're gonna need the normal stuff, fresh gas, uh, probably tires, um, any of the soft parts for the brakes. Yeah, afternoons work for your guys. I, I will tell you, well, I'll tell you this. If if we get to a deal, no one get in the cars and no one touch the brake pedal. That's the number one thing that most people don't understand when a car sat for that long. Because if you get in it and you press the brake pedal and move it in neutral, it will activate the brake. And sometimes it, it won't unactivate. So you literally, if you get in these uh, that have sat for a while and you hit that brake pedal, you just locked it up. <laughs> and uh, we don't want to do that. But uh, super cool. I'd have to run some numbers. Do we know if this is an original car? We believe it's original big block car, original four speed car. This is pretty much the way he bought it, right? So he didn't do the body work or anything on, yeah. Pretty much just bought it the way it sets. But uh, run the numbers on it, it is a big block 427 car. Okay, well, might be the best car in here. And then this is another 66, but it's got like a crazy one piece front end on it. No, Did he blend all this or? Here factory this is like that shark nose thing that they were doing so mike do you know if they if he molded this together or i think he purchased it and and put it on himself um yeah and i don't we didn't we didn't manufacture it you know you we, didn't do this fiberglass work because because no, no, no. it's not a flip no it yeah. comes in from the top so he had an idea to make a uh, go-kart very similar to this body and he was interested in looking for these bodies but there's dyno sheets for this one too that's a 427 roller big block about 630 horsepower on the dyno but my mind is trying to comprehend because it would have split here and this is one piece right into the main body i mean somebody went kind of crazy with it pace car time what do we know about this one, Michael? I believe he bought just so that he could uh, hold on to some money. Yeah, this we I researched the VIN on this one. It's got, I think, the Z11 VIN code on it, so it is original pace car, big block, automatic. Um, yeah, it's original pace car. Cool. You know, I've never owned one of these, and there are so many of them out there. But uh, this, year there, cool. this year there was only a little over 3,600 made. They actually had a production shortage. It's supposed to be 6,400. 6400 and they only ended up making 3600 this year and 69 600 yeah of the pace cars okay i think so this, this is not a road runner and it's not a gtx i think it started life as a plymouth satellite that's what i was going to guess and they took a couple of cars and put together and uh he put a little small 440 in it nothing too crazy <laughs> And, um, he really actually tinkered with this one himself a lot. Um, he didn't do a lot of uh, major mechanical work, but he really enjoyed this. I remember I was with him, you know, when he bought all the chrome low car parts. And, um, you know, a lot of a lot of times we just sat in here uh, drinking beer and fiddling with it. So in your best recollection or what have you, do you think or do you believe that fresh battery, fresh gas and, you know, these will pretty much all fire up? Sure. Okay, because that's the biggest thing when cars have sat for a long time. You're still going to have all the soft parts with uh, brake lines and any of the rubbers and any of the gaskets that may give out once it gets heated up again. But it's been my experience that if you're just careful and you give it a little gas, give it a little juice on the battery and just get it started, let it get there. Don't get too crazy that everything will kind of start melding together and it'll kind of make itself work. Um, but you got a kind of a dangerous position and... These cars were at least stored pretty well. So I don't think you'll, I mean, it's not like a 40 year old barn find. I mean, they, they all have ran recently. So, you know, What's recent? Uh, within it's the last couple of years. years. Well, this one was driven like a month ago, a month or two ago. So oh. I know that one. Yeah. 
Yeah. That one we could probably hit the key on it and drive it. We could probably hit the key on that. And with your cowboy hat, we could film in Louise it all the way back to Texas. Well, hey, it's winter time. You don't need AC. So yeah, this would be perfect. Top down, wind in the hair. Gas is uh, a little smelly. Power steering, power brakes, no AC. What's wrong with this part of the world? They don't like AC around here? We like to go fast. We don't need that extra weight. We don't have 120 degrees and scorpions and all them other critters you got down there in the desert. Well, that's down in South Texas. Up in uh, Dallas, we just got uh, little angry housewives. I know when we were talking on the phone that we had a kind of a price range. I don't think I'm there. I'm gonna step out and make a couple phone calls if you don't mind. Uh, I wanna check on two things that I'm kind of positive on, but I want to make sure I'm not messing with myself in my head. So I'm going to, uh, what is it, call, phone a friend? Yeah, phone a friend. I'm going to phone a friend. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. A few moments later. I don't know if my phone a friend was helpful or hurtful. Who did you call? Well, who would I call? I call Dennis on this kind of stuff every once in a while. He calls me too. He just doesn't show it on his show, Coffee Walk. You follow that. Trust me, when you don't see Dennis, he's calling me. All right, so what I would want to do if we could is make a deal as they sit, no batteries, no starting, no work, just take them off your hands. But, you know, you guys were, you know, north of 200 talking on the phone, and that's why I said, well, I'll get out there. We're kind of there, but this one hurt, and that one's not going to ever go back to a streetcar. It could. I mean, not an original street car, but a cool street car. Two, three, well, four, five, six, seven. I'd throw eight. some headlights on it and drive it. Well, we could just put KC lights across the front of it, Mad Max it. It wouldn't be the craziest thing I've ever done. I know, right? So we got, <laughs> we got eight cars. You put KC lights on a Mustang, look how cool it turned out. Oh, that's my favorite. I actually love that car. It is a lot of fun. But uh, how about, would 150 get it done? No, we can't go that low. Well, I don't want to go to 200. It's going to cost me a grand plus a piece to get them out of here. And then I got to put a couple of three grand into each one to even know what I have, oh. except for possibly this one. I'm just the mediator here, so it's more his decision. So, I mean, I would say maybe split it in the middle. I maybe mean, 175? 165 sounds better, but I can do 175. Okay. That sounds great. Is that a deal? Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so Thank much. You, Michael. Nice I appreciate it. Now I got to figure out how to get them out of here. You said you got a friend? We can bought them now. Well, they're bought. <laughs> Technically, I got to go do some paperwork and yeah. send you guys some money, but you got a friend that can move them? Yeah. He's uh, local here. He should be able to bring a guy out with a rollback, help us get them all loaded up and get them to you in one trip. This would be a cool freaking one load going down the road, wouldn't it? I'm excited because usually you turn to me and go, okay, load them up. Well, no, that's going to be in the morning. Yeah, oh, I, I got to help? I thought we had somebody. Well, he's got a guy that has a truck and, and a rollback and some helpers, but you got to help. Still needs grunt work. You think the freaking millennial with the camera is going to be able to do anything? He's already shaking because he's been holding that thing for so long. All right. Well, well this is my favorite part of doing deals is uh, the handshake is almost always followed by a little bit of banking and some beer, right? Sure. Yep. Let's go. All ready. The next day. All right, so we got in here last night and uh, took a little while, had to look at the cars. We got a deal done and uh, I'm a little worried about it because none of these cars have ran in a few years except for this one. And uh, there's always a chance that something's wrong or uh, we screw something up trying to get it running. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, I reached out to a local trucker, No Limit Trucking, uh, and uh, they're gonna get these cars all loaded onto one open carrier and they're gonna be at the office by the time I get there on Monday morning. So let's just start yanking them out. Uh, nobody touch brake pedals, because that'll lock them up. Let's roll. Let's go ahead and pull it on up so we can load it forward on the roll bike. Mm -hmm. That way we can put it on the hauler forward behind the cab. We're ready to yank 
take this one. Let's just go. We'll be all right. It's not going to roll like that. Especially well, the way you you're driving. You're driving slow. That's top speed on this thing. That's what I'm saying. If it starts rolling, I can't get out of the way. We'll, we'll be all right. All right. Hey, Mike. Fuck. Yeah, you're the millennial guy that where operates the camera, right? Yes, sir. So if you walk up to that house, there's a cooler and you can get me a beer, that'd be nice. That has gone in a couple years. Good to go. I guarantee you hook them hooks up in that tractor and it'll, it'll break those front wheels loose. Yeah, because these brakes are locked. Are the back wheels locked up too or just the front? Yeah, the back ones are locked up too. Well, they'll come in. They're rusted solid. I was going to say, it had to have power for the line lock to stay engaged. Honestly. Yeah, freed up a little bit. Yeah, I think it will. As soon as you roll it with the tractor, it will. It's a little hard time. All four wheels are locked up, but the ground is real uh, kind of slimy and wet and what have you from the rain yesterday. I think once we get it out on the road and drag it a little bit, they'll all break loose. Do we know if this one has brakes? Uh, the last one had excellent brakes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. a little too much. This, well, this one has neutral. Yeah, okay, well, so, that's, that's cool. Right, so. You want to see if this one will start? Nothing. Well, I don't know if you got any gas in it. I think it would if I had gas. Well, and that and the key's not on. So maybe it's not wanting to kick because of that. I don't know where the key's at though. What's going on here? There's some weird shit happening. I think all these batteries are dead because they've been sitting for a couple of years. Well, in about every one of these cars runs. It's a pretty good deal. They don't run now, so you're buying them in unrunning condition, but they will. I just need some batteries, fresh batteries, and some gas, and I guarantee you they would. And a bath. I need a bath. You do need a bath. But I've never heard of it. Kind of cool. I bet you Dennis noticed something. Yeah. Well, all I can say is you are a lucky man. Yep. We rolling. And we're turning. That's good enough.
bed of it so we don't have to carry them up there. So just as promised, uh, our guys at No Limit Auto Transport got these things loaded on uh, Saturday. It's Monday morning, and they are here at Gas Monkey Garage. I'll tell you what, this had to have been a trip going down the road. I, I want to talk to him about how many people were waving him down, trying to figure out if this for sale, if that's for sale. Only thing I wish is I'd have had a big old banner on it said, going to Gas Monkey. What he doesn't know is I'm going to get him in here, show him a little Texas hospitality, maybe some coffee, and uh, get him a t-shirt or something. But then we're going to Dennis's. Wait till you see this. Man, I'll tell you what, I didn't get to go on this trip and I'm kind of bummed out because this is a this is a whole truckload of badass cars. Uh, I did get to go to LST, last show out with the skid market, did really well, so we had some fun with it, but I'm kind of bummed out I didn't get to go on this one. This is some badass shit, right? Well, you got to go to Lone Star Throwdown and play around with the skid mark. I don't know, this is a heavy toss up. <laughs> the most out of all these. Uh, 67, 427, four speed. Yeah. The two Mopars are 340 cars that have been changed to 440 cars. Oh, okay. You know, I didn't put much stock into the race cars. Yeah. And uh, the Camaro, if it's a 396 pace car, they didn't make a whole lot of them, but I didn't run the numbers, so I don't know. If it's real, it's worth it though? Worth money? Be worth uh, more than a small block one. So uh, let's go see what's going on. a lot going on here on Monday morning. So, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of really badass cars here. Obviously, the Corvette caught my eye right off the bat because that thing's just sick, but. Which one? Well, the 427 four-speed car. Yeah, yeah, not the race car. I'm not too much into that, not the other race car. I'm not much too much into that, but that GTX up there with the freaking blower hanging out of it, that's, uh, that's some badass stuff, dude. That's a badass car. It's caged, blower, big tires on the back. I mean, we don't get to play with them. You're, you're making them disappear. It's bullshit. Car came by about 90, slammed on brakes, almost got hit, came to the back of the truck and slow rolled. Took about five minutes to pass by. Whole trip was insane. So the trucker was cutting across. Me and Coy had some stuff to do this afternoon and Dennis called and asked where he was. And I said, well, Dennis, I think he's supposed to be at my office here in a little bit. And he goes, are all those cars on that trailer? I said, yeah. He goes, do you own them all? I said, yeah. And he goes, well, I want to see them before you drop them off. So I don't know what the hell he has planned. I have a stinking suspicion he thinks he's going to buy them from me. He has no idea what I paid for them. Watch the low ball figure that Dennis tries to hit me with. This is going to be worth the comedy alone. But that's why y'all are friends. So low ball your friends. Hey, you 
guys are turning on the street right now. How's things in your world, sir? Drinking coffee for coffee walk? I am. Is that some of your roast? Don't you have like uh, the Holy Grail and what's the new one? Outstanding? The new one's outstanding. This is it right here. You want to smell it? it smells like coffee. Cinnamon and chocolate. Cinnamon and chocolate coffee? I'll just go right to there and we'll just drop them and start yanking them in. We're gonna, we ain't made a deal yet. We're gonna pull them in there. Well, you told me how much they were. I told you simple, a, a range that I paid. Okay. Now we gotta figure out what you're gonna pay. But uh, let's get him to pull up. Put the ass in even with that one. They're gonna go in there. Okay. Let's put the ass into the trailer even with this driveway so we can go up there. which is not how I normally do business, but, well, but I, it's all stuff that I like and all stuff that we mess with. So, I'd be surprised if we can't make a deal unless you're gonna be greedy today, R. I'm never greedy, sir. That's right, you're not. That's why I'm confident I'm gonna, we're gonna make a deal. All right, well, just a quick rundown. I mean, I can look at what it is. 71 Cuda Convertible, 71 Challenger. I think it's a 70 and a, a 71. 70 and 71, 66 Corvette. That's supposed to be a 66 also, what's, yeah, left, what's left of it? <laughs> yeah. And uh, 64 truck, 68 uh, satellite GTX Roadrunner or something. Just an old B-body car. And uh, 58, little go fast car. You sure it's 58? Sure miss a lot of stainless and chrome if it is. Is that what it's titled as? I believe so. Okay. Well, Challenger is a Canada car. Okay. Well, I mean, you can get the paperwork. Yeah, so they brought the, yeah, they they were at a show in Canada, saw the car, wanted it, and uh, the couple had brought it over, and they didn't want to take it back, so they bought it from them. What did they, is, is that just a 318 car that they cloned into something, or do you know? It's I got a 440 know. in it now. It's got a 440 yeah. in it now. Uh, the two Mopars are uh, autos. The pace car is an automatic, but like you were telling me, if it's a 396 real car, I don't know. But it is a real pace car, Z11, right? Yep, well, Z11 so it was not built in LA because those didn't actually say Z11, but it says Z11 on the tag. Did yes. you look at it? That's great. 20% of them were 396 cars. So they are rare, but not like crazy rare. The cool thing that'd be is if that was actually a festival car, which would be one of the ones that they actually used How do you find at the that race. Out? I happen to have those numbers in my pocket, I bet sir. you do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm you not do. surprised. Uh, yeah, I'm about to walk over there yeah. and check that. <laughs> All right, well, we got to make a deal. I think I don't let him look at it before I make the deal. It's like a quarter million dollars worth of cars to me because they're all dead in the water. Good stuff, though. A couple of them have. Is he uh, making money there? Oh, I'm out of this. <laughs> <laughs> I know better. Well, dude, we got. I got eight in transportation. I got probably another four or five going out there with airfares for me and the guys in hotels. And then what I paid for them. Um, so was that an offer? A quarter million bucks? Yeah. Oh, you own them. <laughs> they are yours, sir. Deal. Now all we gotta do is get them off the trailer, Jaime. We can do Which it. Which is y'all's problem. Yes, it is. <laughs> and partially some of his problem. How are you, sir? <laughs> I, I was con. I did it. Richard said he'd get them all off, so I was con. <laughs> yeah, right? right. No, that's a pleasure doing business with you, Mr. Collins. I just happened to have a check. You're taking a check today, right? I will take a check. Okay. Do any of them have paperwork? All of them have paperwork. Some of them don't have titles because they came from states that don't have titles, but they got the registrations. Okay. And all the rest of them have titles. Well, it'll be really fun to get these off, get them running, and see what I actually bought. Hopefully it's not a whole bunch of small block cars with big blocks shoved in them, but I have a feeling that's probably what they are. Well, I told you that, except for the silver car. But you, so you think that's a real big block car? Nobody knew. We're going to find out. <laughs> You just made my day, maybe even my week. That's good. So uh, this one is the only one that didn't roll. They were it was locked up, locked up. And we do have the hood. Okay. And Mike says he might have somebody that's interested in that. Okay. That's good, because I'd be interested in selling it. I'll give you his number. <laughs> so um, I'm not real quite sure how to uh, how to tell this story, because we do have my million dollar challenge going on. I did make a fair good deal. Uh, Dennis sometimes gets excited or he might be a little low in inventory 
and he just spouted off the number. So, I mean, everybody can do simple math. That makes uh, a decent enough profit. Um, I would say I'll do a little bit of math, but it's probably 15 to 20 percent total after expenses, um, which isn't bad considering all we did was go out there, load them, get them here, and uh, he's going to unload them and the truck driver can go back home to uh, North Carolina. I'm pretty stoked on that, but man, why did he start so high?